All right, so we have some nice questions and observations from the various readings this week that I think are uh, pointing to some of the same um, underlying uh, considerations that we're exploring through practice. So let's see if I can in five minutes um, address them and share some thoughts that might be helpful, bringing these different kinds of questions all into the same uh, container. So here's this really nice um, insight. I realized how attached to my train of thoughts I can be and that I must learn to let it go. We've talked about and we will continue to talk about what it means to let it go. How do you let a thought or in this case a train of thoughts go? So what's really wonderful here is that uh, we do have a lot of you know, thinking going on. We can call that a train of thoughts that uh, we can be attached to it. You know, it's like this train comes by, we just get not, you know, fall into it and off it goes. And who knows where it is that, you know, it lets us out, you know, how far in the future, you know, worrying about things that may or may not ever happen. So um, the, the, the tendency is to say, okay, how do I let it go? I must let it go. And perhaps by merely being aware of the fact that there is this train of thoughts to go, oh, I'm thinking about this. Lo, oh, there's that story again that the letting go happens without trying or without needing to by virtue of the um, faculty or the capacity that we have to be aware of thinking in the first place. All right, here's another one. I'm learning that mindfulness is not necessarily about controlling every thought we have. You see how that little connector here? And that would be impossible, indeed, a nice realization. But rather to be aware of our mind wandering, taking a step back and not letting it control our reactions in the heat of the moment. So there's this interesting three-parter, right? To be aware of mind wandering, to take a step back, and then to not let it control, or perhaps we could say control as much, um, our reactions. And I wanna to suggest to you that the aware of mind wandering is the stepping back and is the um, setting in motion being less reactive, that we think that we're going to be aware of mind wandering and then do something to improve things. And perhaps the aware of mind wandering takes care of much more than we might think. All right, here's one. Um, I would like to better control the voice in my head. This is coming off of Dan Harris and Michael Singer's readings on the voice in our head. Um, I understand that I am the one talking to myself. That's a great insight, a great realization. But how can I control this conversation, especially when it's something I do not want to talk about, right? You know, you're aware that there's this conversation you're having and you're like, oh, why am I even going through this? Why am I you know, getting caught up in all this? Well, it, the answer is in some ways not to do anything about it, but to notice it and to stay in the state of noticing. And we will continually be feeling the tug to do something with that noticing. Cause like, oh, now I notice it. Now I'll do something. I'll step back. I'll do this. I'll do that. When in fact, perhaps there's nothing that needs to be done. Now it may well be that to notice the train of thoughts or to notice the um, voice in the head or to notice the activity of the mind isn't so straightforward that there can be degrees of noticing and staying steady and present while the activity of the mind, thoughts and feelings are um, arising and passing away. And so this is why when we practice mindfulness, we are developing that capacity, um, the capacity to notice and to observe. Which brings us to our last one. Uh, is there a way to get our mental mode of reality? This is the story that we're telling ourselves about reality that may not be so much in alignment with reality to better match actual reality. Yeah, wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, what do you think the answer is in light of where this is going? It might very well be that the moment that we are aware and are able to turn our attention and observe the mental mode of reality, the story that we're telling ourselves. In that shift that we make, we become more in alignment with reality. So we don't have to try to get there. The realization that there's a story arising and we um, land there without having to try to get there. All right, hope this is helpful. Great questions and great observations.